uh, Brock the Hour. This is our recording. Yeah, we're good. Uh, Brock the Hour. Brock the Hour side. Brock the Hour. Brock the Hour side. Brock the Hour. Brock the Hour side. Uh, all, all praises, uh, glory be unto the Alba Shimi outside with our heart with us. Uh, double honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone and honesty brothers that we push in this truth and sincerity for the four corners of the earth. So I'm um, back out here again for the grace and mercy of the Alba Shimi outside. Um, and um, Lord's will can get into some edification, some, um, some scriptures, uh, prophecy. And I'm just going to go over the spirit, uh, spirit, let's see where the spirit takes us. Lord's will we can get into some, some teaching. And um, uh, Lord's will, some edification can be brought out regarding the scriptures, uh, prophecy, okay, the my mysteries of the scriptures, and many other things alike. Uh, but like I said, I'm just going to go in the spirit. And you got a lot of things that are happening. But one of the major things that are happening, or which brothers have gone into it during the week, is the thing of the mark of the beast, the RFID chip. And I'll start with that, and then maybe just touch on other different topics that I feel are re relevant and related to the mark of the beast, the RFID chip, and uh, and see how we get on. So the book of Revelations, the 13th chapter. Okay, the book of Revelations, the 13th chapter. Uh, starting first at the... Um, I'll start here at uh, Revelations 13 and 16. It says, And he causeth all, both great and rich, and poor and free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So uh, pretty much what you find out there is uh, you got a um, you got a thing of uh, a, a wealth not equally distributed out here, okay? So you got it to where you got the rich, they they they're lying, they're sitting in their high horses, okay? Of which when you go into the book of Ecclesiastes, or uh, Ecclesiastes, it says that what that how the mo Yahweh side when he was on the scene, when, when he was known as Solomon, basically he see he said he's seen uh, evil within the earth. And he's seen that servants have become our, 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 our lords and kings, okay. And pretty much the the, the, the servant was the servants were ruling the earth. This is the period of time that we're living in right now, where the, the servant Esau, okay, is in power of the earth, all right. And then he's got it to where he's got control of the resources of the earth, the gold, the oil, okay, the diamonds, whatever uh, commodity you want to go into. Pretty much they've got control over it, and they've set it up to where what you got it to where you got some people are going to be rich. And you got some people that are going to be in, uh, 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 poor. You got some people that was going to be in the middle. And the reality of the situation is, in any kingdom, that was always going to be the case. Now, what you're going to have it to where is when we get our kingdom set up, you're going to have the whole flip side of what's happening out here set up. You're going to have it to where uh, uh, Esau is going to be on the bottom, and the Israelites, the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, the ones that are at the bottom of this society, they're going to be right back where they're supposed to be. In fact, the proof of that is within the book of Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter and the sixth verse. So if I go to the book of Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter and the sixth verse, it says, um, uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 6, it says, For thou art a holy people. In fact, if we go up, Okay, let's start from 7, Deuteronomy 7 and 1. It says, When the Lord thy power shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess. This is talking about the prophecy about us going and conquering, all right, the land of Canaan. And you had the, 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 them Hamites up in that land. And guess what happened? We went up into there because they was committing audacious works, or right? they was into witchcraft, they was into uh, idolatry and all of these other things. You're gonna, you had it to where what? The Mosai had it to had it sanction us to go up into that land and take them, take them out pretty much. Okay, so it says here, whither thou goest to possess it, and we was going to possess that land. That was our land. Because pretty much when you check out what happened, all right, during the prophetic history, you really find out that when Adam was on the earth, that particular land that we was in, you know, I'm not saying that that's in the scriptures, but pretty much that was the land that was, you know, the, 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 the garden eastward in Eden, that would have had to been, you know, the land of Israel. Okay, so that was always in our possession. It, it's only that through uh, iniquity, we fell off of, 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 of the righteous path. Because you had it to where you had the sons of God, okay, the sons of men, and then the sons of the wicked, which today is known as what? The, what what's another word for a son? Okay, a son of God or a son of a king is a prince. 
okay, and what's another uh, 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 word for, 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 for God? Okay, another word for God is power, okay, or he, the prince with the power, that literally means the sons of God, man. And you got it where the other nations, they're the sons of men, but you got it, you always have that seed of the wicked, which is Esau, up until the time when the most side, Yah Bashim outside is going to remove the son of, of, of the wicked, okay, the, the, the wicked seed out of the earth, which is going to play out by way of this RFID chip being put, pushed out there, then subsequently the World War Three. then Yahweh Shai is going to come and redeem his children, okay, from the earth, and in so redeeming his children from the earth, destroy the power structure that you've got out here, and then you're going to have it where you got a thousand, a thousand year period of hardcore captivity that was going to be up, up, upon the Edomites, and then after that they're going to be wiped off the face of the earth. I mean, these two scriptures that I'm going to, I, I could get into, okay, in a little while, all right, but for the time being, I'm going to stick to the topic, so I might get into that. All right, but for now, I'm just gonna stick with what, pretty much the, the basis of what we got going over here. Okay, so the book of Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, and the sixth verse, and it says the Hittites and the Gergesites, okay, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, okay, the, the Habites, the Jebusites, seven nations that were greater and mightier than us. Now, what does that go to show you? That goes to show you that the Mosai, Yahabah Shimei Shai, okay, the scripture says that he rules in the kingdom of men, and when we went to take out them, them, them Hermetic nations, he was with us to take out them Hermetic nations, man. Okay, he was with, he was with the children of Israel to do that, and so shall he be with us to basically have it to where uh, we're going to be, because uh, the scripture says that what? He shall make us a new threshing instrument. So he's gonna he's gonna have it where it's gonna be within his power to dispense to have it where we're gonna be partaking in the taking down of this, of this kingdom. But really, it starts off with Yahweh Shai. Let's prove that. The book of Isaiah, the sixty-third chapter, one of my favorite scriptures. Okay, because you got a lot of people that think that the Lord's gonna come. All right, uh, uh, the Lord's gonna come and he's gonna make. Just, he's just gonna be peaceable. Of which he's gonna be, in, he's gonna be uh, creating peace, but he's gonna be creating peace through the most chaos that you've ever experienced within the world. Okay, which is the chaos of the World War Three. Here it is. You got it to where Esau, okay, through his own pride, thinks that he's gonna be the master of the World War Three. The reality of the situation is, it's gonna be the Most High that's gonna create all of this chaos, and he's gonna use Esau to create this chaos. But Esau is gonna be taken within his own trap. That's within the Book of Job. I believe it's in the 15th chapter where it talks about how the wicked is taken up in his own craftiness. The book of uh, Isaiah, the 63rd chapter and 1, who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Bozrah? And when you go into the history, you find out that Bozrah was one of the principal cities of Edom. Edom being the name given unto the uh, land and the people of the children of Esau, of which Esau was the brother of Jacob, and they became a great nation within the world, and they're the people that rule the world right now. And unto them was given a great sword, and power was given unto them to take peace from the earth. Hence the situation that you got playing out here. And it says here, uh, um, that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. And the Lord said that what? I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore have thou read in thine apparel, is what Isaiah, the man Isaiah responded. And he says, I've trodden the winepress alone, and of the people that was numb with me, I'll trend them in my anger. So the Lord's coming back with a great vengeance, because remember what the scripture says, right? That he was going to bring destruction unto them that destroy the earth. You check out the condition of the earth right now, it ain't in a good condition. All right, you got it to where you got plastic pollution at an all time high. Okay, moral pollution is at an all time high. You got it. You, the, the, Everyone out here is as, is as immoral as they possibly could be. Matter of fact, when you go into the scriptures, you find out that a lot of people are out here to serve their own belly. Right? That includes the, the, the guys that call themselves Israelites too. Okay? You got a, a whole bunch of guys that call themselves Israelites, but they're in it for the money game, man. All right? They're in it to basically to live to live large off of the off of the back of the of their own fellow brothers, man. Okay? But, if, but for the rest of the people out here, they are out here to fulfill their own belly. Their God is their own belly, okay, which is their own mind when you go into that word. All right, it says, I've trodden the wine press alone, and of the with people that was with me, I'll tread them in my anger, trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I'll stain all my raiment, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. So the Lord is going to be the, the, the first one, okay, to be really at the forefront of the redemption all right, of the people. You go into the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and the 68th verse, what did they say? How the Lord was going to take us into captivity by way of slave ships and so on and so forth. But one of the last things it says that is that no man shall buy us. And when you go into that word buy, it goes into redemption. Okay, no man was going to redeem us, save the Lord himself. So when the Lord's coming back, he's coming back to redeem his people. Okay, we could go into the book of Job and, uh, Joel, uh, uh, the, 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 the third chapter to prove that even further. Okay. 
So back in the book of Deuteronomy, it's the seventh chapter, and this is uh, the second verse. It says, And when the Lord thy power shall deliver thee before thee, all right, thou shalt, and that goes to show you, it weren't off of our own might. See, the ancient men, men of old, <coughs> excuse me, they understood what, what went down. They understood that Yahweh Bashim al Shai will go forth into the battle before them, and he'll be the one that's going to deliver them out of those particular battles. They understood that. That's why them great men of old weren't proud, okay? They weren't, you know, they was humble men, okay? They was down to earth. Like, you no know, great warriors like Judas Maccabees, all right? King David himself, he was a great warrior, all right? When King Saul was in his right mind, he was a great warrior too. And they always reverenced the most side. Now, you might have a proud individual that would come, <coughs> a successor to that, and talk about how they've delivered the, the, themselves from this, that, and the third, and the most side will jack him up. Even you had the situation with Ant was it Antiochus, Antiochus, all right, at which he was, he was what? He was uh, uh, reveling in his own so-called glory, but he came to find out that the only one, that there's only one glory, and that's the glory of Yahweh Hashim outside, because I believe he had taken down a whole bunch of people. Matter of fact, when you go into the word uh, uh, epiphanies, I believe it says it goes into the meaning of basically being godlike. So because he had won certain battles and wars and so on and so forth, he basically, he, he basically announced himself to be a, to be a god, and the Most High jacked his ass up, man. Okay, to the end that he was on his deathbed, <coughs> basically praying, all right, praying to the Most High, okay, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, basically to take away that curse from him because I believe it was a stench. He he was smelling bad. Uh, you know, I might be mix, mixing stories up there, but I, I believe it was a a, a, a a condition where even his own generals and his servants they couldn't smell him, and the the Most High basically humbled him, and he prayed and he begged so uh, and he begged, but the Most High still didn't deal with him. And what does that go to prove? That goes to prove that the Most the Lord Yahweh Hashem outside. He's the one that goes out there and, and, and delivers a man to battle, uh, uh, from a battle. And he's going to be the same one that's going to deliver the children of Israel, okay, not some warrior uh, 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 tribe or warrior nation or warrior organization that's going to uh, 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 set up an organization, uh, set up a, a GoFundMe and a PayPal, okay, and get enough money from the people so that they was going to rise up. That's not going to happen. That's not how the most I set it up. <coughs> Matter of fact, when you go into the curse of Cain, and the scripture said, which Cain is Esau, which Esau is Cain coming back. Okay, when you go into the curse of Cain and Esau, pretty much you find out that what? You find out that the Messiah said anyone that, that touches Esau, okay, was going to get jacked up, man. Okay, save the Lord himself. Okay. So it says that, um, uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 2, it says, and when, the, uh, and when the Lord, okay, thy power shall deliver the, them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them, and thou shalt make a covenant, and thou shalt not... Thou shalt make no covenant with them, and thou shalt have no mercy unto them. And that goes to show you the, the, the brutality, okay, of, 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 of the entirety of the scriptures. Because you got some, some bozos out here, <coughs> pretty much their, 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 their whole thing is that what? That's the Old Testament, uh, that's the Old Testament God. Man, the scripture says that the Lord is the same yesterday as he is today, and he was going to be the same forevermore. Okay, and, and, and if he was going to change, pretty much the, the, the children of Israel was going to be what? Without a power, okay. But because he's consistent, guess what? The children of Israel were gonna go through the situation of slavery. They was gonna go through the situation of being the the, the, the last hired, first fired, and so on and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. To the end that he was gonna have mercy upon them at the last end. Okay. So the third verse it says, "Thou, thou neither shall I make marriages of with them, with their daughters." Or, or, or shall I give not unto thy sons, and uh, uh, thy sons, shall, thy daughters shall not, not give unto their sons? Okay, right? Because they was all up into what witchcraft and that man. So you got it to where you got a, a nation that you're building, and you want to build that nation up in righteousness. Then you got your, your the daughter or your son that gets married unto this wicked Nate, one of these one of the children of these wicked men. What's going to happen? You was going to have a particular cancer that was going to come into that into the into the <coughs> into, <coughs> into the stronghold. Okay, so the most I said, look, don't do that. All right. Now, over, over, when you go into the law, you find out that there was particular laws that that permitted, okay, Israelite men to have concubines of the other nations. Okay, but you weren't supposed to be making marriages with them heathen nations. Okay. Now here's the point. Now we've now we know that we were talking about the children of Israel. Now let's go into what it, what, what the point that I was getting that was, or which is in the sixth verse. All right, Deuteronomy seven and six it says, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord. 
thy power, and he has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people upon the face of the earth. Okay, so the Mosai set it up to where what? The children of Israel, basically they was on a higher level, <coughs> both spiritually, okay, uh, physically, mentally. We're built different, man. Okay, and that's why the Mosai gave us that surname. We got, we, we, we got, we got, we got, we got that X factor. Okay, you check out who's the, you the, who the baddest scientist is, and you might talk about academics, you might have it to where the Israelites are seen as if they're on the bottom, and that's just how, how the thing of slavery works. But check it out, who are the best inventors of the minute right now? You got it to where you got one Nigerian dude out there, he's supposed to be the top guy when it comes to robotics, okay? You got a Nigerian family here within the UK, that's supposed to be the smartest academic family within the whole, whole of the UK. Now what does that go to show you about Zay? <coughs> Even if you consider the so-called um, the so-called uh, 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 slavery, you, you consider all the stuff that happened to the Israelites, and still at the end of that, we're still arising from that. That goes to show you that we, we truly are the chosen people of the most sight. But see, when the Lord's going to come back, he's going to take it to another level, man. Okay, to the level that the scripture says that what? We, ye are gods. Okay, we're going to be gods upon the earth, and these other people are going to bow down to us, and hence the word uh, blessed. Because when you go into the word blessed or barak, it goes on to, on to the word uh, meaning uh, 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 of, of other people bowing to you. Because when you're a king and you go to where people bow to you, then you're blessed. Okay? So continuing now, back within the book of Revelations, the 13th chapter. Okay, I was at the uh, 13th verse. All right, Revelations 13 and, uh, sorry, Revelations 13 and 16. It says, he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor. All right, free and bond, of which are, are, are the real poor right now. <coughs> The poor within the world right now are the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, the Israelites that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Even when you go into the scriptures within the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, on the 6th, 4th verse, okay, where it talks about how the, um, the children of Israel was going to be scattered, all right, they was going to be, uh, 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 miss all of these other, other nations and that. Pretty much what you get into finding out is whether they may be scattered amongst them Elamites out there within the land of India or whatever. They was gonna be in the same predicament as the same Israelites. Okay, their brothers, whether they may be within within Jamaica, whether their brothers is is is, is, a, is the Negroes out there within America, they was all gonna be in the same case. That's why you got it to where you got, you know, uh, 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 um, you got it to where you got uh, uh, certain uh, uh, um, caste systems that put certain families of them Elamites right at the bottom because they really ain't Elamites, they really Israelites. The scripture talks about how, how I missed these nations, we wasn't going to find no east, okay? And that's going into what? That's going into the fact that those curses were going to follow the children of Israel, whether they might look like an Edomite, okay? That's why you might, you might have had a friend from young, okay? He looked like an Edomite, and, but, you can simp but he can sympathize with you because he was going through the same thing, because really, he's off the same stock, okay? He's off the same stock of Abraham. No, no, no thanks, mate. What's that? Right? You, you believe in the scriptures? Yeah. yeah. What do you know about the scriptures? <laughs> you study the scriptures? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm studying. Okay, yeah, so I'm who, who, who's, who's, who's gonna, who, who is the Lord coming to save? Who's Jesus coming to save? Is I Jesus coming? Sinners, Sorry? Okay, that's good. Who can sin? Anyone. Oh, sin lives in us. That's not true. Yeah, it is in Romans 7. Romans 7. That's not true. Who, 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 what all was he talking about? Romans 7. He was talking about battling between himself with the flesh and the Yeah, stomach. but what all was he talking it? about? So we were like, cooks out with the Holy Spirit, man. Right. You've got to like, submit to God, haven't you? Trust God. I'm going to tell you something. That, those scriptures are talking about now, yeah, everybody can sin. That's true. But really, the, the, the scriptures talk about how, uh, uh, um, you know what sin is according to the Bible? Screen, sin is, a, is a, 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 the, 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 the direct uh, biblical quote for sin. It says that sin is the transgression of the law. Am I incorrect in saying that? Oh, yes, okay, so who, do, who was the law given to? Moses. Who did Moses give the law to? No, I can't remember. The children of Israel. Oh, yeah, and then they said Jacob. Okay, cool. That's good. So we're speaking the same language now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if the, if the children of Israel are the only ones that got the law, then who can only be the ones that can be redeemed from breaking the law? Everyone, because Jesus said it was for everyone. Because he invited, he, he, he taught in parables, didn't he? And he said it. Okay, what scripture like, is that? You're gonna, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to. I don't need to. What, what scripture do you get it to where the, the, the Lord came for everybody? Because he invited, he invited, invited everyone to the wedding feast, didn't he? Yeah, it, it, that's, in the parable, yeah. That's that's that that weren't talking. That's not what that was talking well, about. Why not? That's not what that was talking about. I'm gonna let you into a secret. Right. When the Lord came, all right, on the scene. All right, you're going to, I'll go, I'll, I'll read the scripture for you and you're going to break it down yourself, okay? 
So starting here within the book of Matthew, the first chapter, right. the, the very, the so-called New Testament, the very first book yeah, of the yeah. New Testament, Matthew 1 and 21, and you're going to break it down for yourself. And she shall bring forth a son, yeah. Mary, <coughs> and thou shalt name, call his name Jesus, yeah. within, within the Greek, that's not really his name, that's yes, the Greek. Close, yeah, yeah. but yeah. it's close. But I'll give you, I'll give you, yeah, yeah. I'll give you points for being <laughs> more accurate. Yeah. But that's not really it, okay? And I shall call his name Jesus, right? Now you know what the word Jesus means. I am, I am. I uh, no, no, that's the that's the word that's the name for the most side. That's not the name for Jesus. But I, again, I, I'll give you, I'll give I, you I, points for trying. I am, I was, I will be. Man. No, the word Jesus is the same word as Joshua. Did Joshua. you know that? Okay, the word Jesus and Joshua is the same word. It just means he, the deliverer. Okay, now why is it the same name as Joshua? Because Joshua delivered the children of Israel. Okay, yeah. He was, he was the head guy when they was going into the land of Canaan and yeah. you get what I'm saying? That's why he was, it was an omen nomen. And the, and the Lord, Lord Jesus was what? Jesus because he was going to deliver the same, he was going to do the same thing. Now check out, check out what the scripture says. And she shall bring forth a son, right? And thou shalt name his, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. Who are his people? Jews, wasn't it? That was his people, wasn't it? Good, yeah, good. Yeah, now yeah. we're speaking the same language. No, but now what does the word Jew mean? Because you're going to have to expound oh, upon that. Know. Oh, See, Now I, the word I, I Jew, 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 I'm not, I'm not like there, Jew right? comes from that, 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 Judah. Okay, you got I'm 12 tribes. Judah. Yeah, you got yeah. 12 tribes that make up the, the, the nations of Israel, yeah, right? Okay, the, the yeah, first. Abraham's kids are. No, no, those are those are the those are the children of Israel. Okay, and and the first son, the first one is Judah. Now I'm gonna give you a little history lesson. What happened within the history is that you know you know the man King Solomon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We got, we got problems. Okay, good, good, yeah, yeah, right. Man, yeah. Now, now King Solomon was King David's son. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. King David did many battles with the other nations, yeah, yeah. so that the earth was quiet before the children of Israel. You understand what I'm okay, saying? Yeah, yeah. So what happened is when King Solomon came into power, he inherited a, a peaceful kingdom. Now what he did to, uh, to secure that, yeah. to secure that peace, you know what he did? He made marriages with other different nations, other, other women of the 